Well, good morning. Glad to have you here with me this morning. I'm glad that all of you are here to get our lives centered for this day, centered around the person that we gather around, and that is Jesus, who we gather in his name this morning. And I also hope that you all slept well. I had a good night's sleep, so that's always an important way to start the day. Let's get started by taking a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And close our eyes for this moment. And connect with that reality of the presence of our Lord. He is right here, where, wherever you might be. He is right with you, as he is with me. And Jesus said that he would be with us till the end of the age. And Jesus said that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he would be there. He'd be in the midst of us. And I believe in that reality. I stake my life on that reality. And I hope that you do too. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, let us get into this this morning and start with our prayer. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 37, verses 1 through 17. Uh, that is the only psalm that we have this morning. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend their bows and bring down the poor and needy to kill those who walk uprightly. Their sword shall enter their own heart, for their bows shall be broken. Better is the life that the righteous person has than the abundance of the many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. This is a wonderful words here, and it really took me here on verse 7 be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him yeah that's a tough one isn't it just to be patiently waiting for the Lord he says do not fret over those 
who prosper in their way over those who carry out the evil devices. And we do certainly fret, but I mean, the Lord is calling for us to be patient and not to fret, you know, over all the things that we see in this world that, that seems to be unjust and unfair. We should just be focused on Jesus, focused on that presence, and I think that's a really good word for us this morning. Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 17, the gospel according to John, I should say. <clears throat> As he walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. And then he went and washed and came back to see. And the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? And some were saying, It is he. And others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. And then he, I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. And they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was Sabbath when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. And then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. And others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. In this scripture this morning from the Gospel according to John, we have this story of healing. It's, it's a sign of the kingdom to come. G, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, John frequently tells these stories or if, you know it tells about these stories that uh, where Jesus heals on one there are signs of that coming kingdom and we also have an I am statement wherever we hear I am we should re reflect back to the burning bush of the God revealed to Abraham as I am I am the light of the world and so Jesus brings light in the world because he is the divine one. He is as the Father is. And so God is revealed as light. And so we know that. But of course, we're quarrelsome people like the Pharisees and, uh, and the neighbors who are curious about what's going on here. And they take it to the Pharisees because at that time that was their authority. And their authority, of course, does not like anyone that, in, that steps into their territory. So they are suspicious of this Jesus. And they said because he did this on Sabbath, he could not be from God. And so this is the, they're, they're trying to use falsehoods in order to uh, denigrate what Jesus has done. How often do we hear that being done? How often do, might we not do it in, in order to 
not lose our power, our individualistic power that we cleave to and so wrongly stray away from God. Something to think about this morning, isn't it? Let us go to our prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We pray for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice and freedom and peace. We pray for Reliance and Writings Chapel Charge, for all the small and large churches, for Bishop Sharma Lewis, for the Virginia Annual Conference, and for the Global United Methodist Church. Lord, we pray for our world at this time of challenge in the face of coronavirus pandemic, for all those who lead their people through this crisis, for the doctors and nurses overwhelmed by the numbers, for those quarantined, for those who are suffering with the virus, for those who have lost loved ones. For all the world, this time of challenge in the face of the social unrest brought on by divisiveness and hatred for the other, for all those who are the peacemakers and those who seek to end justices. We also pray for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us do this together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold your spirit that we may live and serve you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now let us as people of God pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. glad that you were with us again and this, I hope that this time of prayer has been able to help you get focused for this day most of our days in this pandemic time and with all that the things that are happening in our society and the, uh, the, the trials that we have as we go about our, our business this day it's it can all be difficult, but it is all better when we know that we have someone who is walking with us, and that is Jesus. 
this Jesus has suffered with us and carries our burden for us. So let's rely on that this day. Let's go to our ending prayer this morning. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Be safe today, wear your mask, wash your hands, do those, remember to be, you know, safe distancing from others, and walk with the Lord and, and, and be kind to others and gener you know, have uh, compassion, you know, I mean, our Lord is one of compassion. Most of all, love God with all that you have and love others. Now go in the peace of Christ, and I'll see you next time. God bless.